In the People's House, it is a great honor to nominate the People's Speaker. In the House, we are eager for a fresh start, one that will make us more effective and one that will help us better reflect the will of the people of Oklahoma. And members, there is no better person to lead us in this calling than Representative Charles McCall. I have served for four years in this house with Representative McCall. We became good friends. I've seen this man up close. I know what he is made of. Let me tell you something about Charles McCall. Charles McCall is a man of solid character. He's a man that believes public service is a calling, not a career. He came to us in the House and before coming to us served eight years as the mayor of his hometown, Atoka, Oklahoma. He served as the president of the local chamber of commerce. He served as president of the Lions Club. Service is in his DNA. Over the last four years, Charles McCall has served this house with honor and dignity. And the results have been impressive. After only two years in this house, his leadership skills were recognized and he was appointed chairman of the powerful Tax and Revenue Committee. As Tax and Revenue Chairman last year, he led the fight to end wasteful tax credits and deductions. And you know what? He won that fight. Charles McCall is a Reagan conservative through and through pro-jobs, pro-family, pro-life. But most importantly, he's the father of two sons, Chase and Carson. And he calls his wife Stephanie the best part of his life. Many words come to mind to, de to describe Charles McCall. Fair, honorable, trustworthy, but the one word that comes especially to mind is respectful. Charles McCall leads with respect. He respects the members, he respects the process, and he respects this house as an institution. This is a man who, who runs his business and lives his life with the belief that you're only successful after you help others become successful first. Members, the man I am nominating is a man of conviction, a man of faith, and a man that you can trust. Mr. Speaker, I formally nominate Representative Charles McCall of Atoka to serve as our, rep as our Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 56th Oklahoma Legislature. Thank you, Representative O'Donnell. Representative Thompson, you are recognized at this time to second the nomination. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, it is an honor to second the nomination for the Honorable Representative Charles McCall from Atoka, Oklahoma. I gotta tell you, whenever I first met Charles, I never thought that I would be saying that. I had my hesitations at first. I, I had met him before, but I hung out with him one day knocking doors, and while he was classy, he was gracious, he was all those things, I had a little problem with him because he was so doggone nice. And, and you know, and I, I watched him, and in fact, I, I got tempted during the day just to rough up his hair a little bit, just to see if I could get him, get him riled up a little bit. But you know, over the last uh, four years of, of serving with him, one thing I've known is that uh, those characteristics uh, have uh, been revealed on a daily basis and have I've seen him live that out you know we have um, many obstacles facing us but uh, at the same time I see that those obstacles are opportunities with the right leadership 
I believe that we need a leader that has the boldness to have an out-of-the-box vision, uh, that has uh, the humility to listen to others, that has the confidence in himself, but also confidence in, in knowing who he is, but also the wisdom to know who he's not and where his weaknesses are. Has a faith in God to know that God is bigger than all of this, and once we step out of these capital walls, that beyond all the politics and all the rigmarole, that God is in control, and he's smart enough to listen to his wife. I, uh, I see those characteristics in Charles McCall, and I see him as a man for a time like this, a man that can stand in the gap to make those obstacles opportunities, and so it is an honor for me to second the nomination for Representative Charles McCall to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives. You're recognized, Mr. Speaker. Thank you tremendously. This is an unbelievable honor. There's so many pe people here that I need to thank, and I'm not just talking about the members of this noble body who have trusted me with this honor. My wife, Stephanie, is at the top of that list. When it comes to people responsible for anything good that happens in my life, it's because of you. I would not be serving in the House, let alone as Speaker, without her constant love and support. Thank you, sweetheart. I love you. Even after 23 years of marriage, I still stand amazed that we met on a blind date and you agreed to marry me three years, three months, and three days from that blind date. And I certainly am here to confirm and attest that I'm the, business, the biggest beneficiary of, the, of that marriage. Thank you for all that you do for me. I'm also thankful for my one, two wonderful sons, Chase and Carson, for sharing your dad these past few years. I know that it isn't always easy, but I want you to know how much I appreciate it and how proud I am of both of you. It means a great deal to me that both of you are here today with me. And since it results in an excused absence from school, I'm sure you're happy to be here with me today also. <laughs> to my mother and father in the gallery, thank you for all your love, your support, your encouragement throughout the years, and for a loving home I was blessed to experience, of which I am sincerely grateful. For the great advice and for guidance, throughout life on priorities and to put others before oneself. Thank you. To my only brother, Patrick Clay McCall, who's not here today because he's operating our family business in my absence, thank you for your support, Clay, in this role of public service that will require more time than experienced in the past four years. It has been said that in the shadow of every successful man is a very surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hayes, thank you for being here today, although you may be extremely surprised. But in all seriousness, thank you for trusting me with your daughter. Thank you for blessing our marriage over two decades ago and for your support spanning that time. It is also very special for me to have my pastors throughout my life present today. Mr. Jeff Holland, now pastoring Pine Lake Church in Brandon, Mississippi. Jeff, thank you for being here. Pastor William Elkins, Jr., pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Pastor, thank you for being here. Joe Chapin, pastor of First Baptist Church in Atoka. Joe, thank you. 
The day that I filed to run for this office, I made two calls before I turned in my paperwork to my dad and to my pastor, Joe Chapin. Thank you for your courage and your support. Also, Scott Walker, pastor of Cornerstone Church, and Pastor James Krausen, who's now retired. Thank you all for being here. You honor me today with your presence. To the wonderful people of House District 22, thank you for your faith and trust that you placed in me as your first Republican representative in our state's history. It's been an honor and a privilege to represent and serve you these past four years. I would not be here today but for the opportunity you have granted me to serve. Representative O'Donnell, Representative Thompson, thank you for your very kind words. I'm not, I'm not completely certain I'm the person you described, but thank you very much. I'm certainly a person of a fallible, not perfect person, but I do appreciate your words. I appreciate your friendship. Both your integrity and character inspire. Members, I look across the chamber today and I see I'm not the only one with a new job. The last time our state had this many new members and a new speaker was in 2005. That was the first session for the new members who were elected after term limits took effect and today those members themselves are term limited. And so it will be one day for all of us, whether you leave the legislature because of term limits, because of, of a, new, a new job opportunity, or because you feel like your work here is done, we all have one thing in common. We're term limited. This should be a very sobering thought to us. I've spent a lot of time walking up and down the halls of the fourth floor. Some of the more senior members have walked those halls many times, but for you new, new members, and quite honestly, all of us, you should take a few moments one day and look at the hundreds of members who have come before you. You will find a lot of similar faces. You'll find a lot of men and women, Republicans and Democrats, who were sent here by their constituents to be their voice in our government. They came here to do great things for our state. They came here to solve problems. They came here to build a better Oklahoma for future generations from the legacy that was left to them by their predecessors. And now those future generations they work for are sitting in the very chairs. They are gone and we are here. It is only a matter of time before our season is finished and a new generation of leaders will be left to contend with the decisions we make. My hope is that we can work together to make the best decisions possible for that generation and beyond. It all starts today and there is much difficult work to do. Our state has suffered an economic recession over the past few years and that recession has put a great strain on our budget. But let us not forget the strain it has put on the thousands of Oklahoma families. It is easy sometimes in this building to think of the budget in terms of numbers, but we should always remember that the budget is built with the tax dollars of hard-working Oklahomans. This year, like the past few years, those tax dollars are short in short supply. That makes it even more important for us to focus on the most important priorities. Members, there is no time for distractions. First, I believe it is time to give the Oklahoma teachers a much deserved pay raise. We must find a way. The people spoke this past November and said the legislature should find the solution. I understand revenues are down, but I believe we can work together and craft a responsible pay increase for a group of individuals that are so critical to our state. Like so many important issues we deal with here, teacher pay should not be a partisan issue. 
We should all work together as Democrats and Republicans to find solutions to this challenge. I've had an opportunity to work with Leader Inman for a number of years, and I know he agrees when it, that we should put politics aside when it comes to doing the people's business. Leader Inman, I know we won't always agree on what to do or how we do it, but I know we will find ways to work together. I thank you for your service and look forward to working with you and my Democratic colleagues. One area where I'm optimistic that we will find some common ground in both parties is on corrections reform. The people of Oklahoma spoke loudly and clearly on this issue in the past election with strong bipartisan majorities. We simply cannot afford to maintain the policies of the past. Working together, we will do what is necessary to Im implement the will of the people and change our approach to corrections while maintaining the public safety. We also cannot afford to continue doing business as usual. That's why I've called for an open and transparent review of our largest agency's budgets right here in this chamber. In the past, budget hearings were limited to members on the relevant committee. But, st but starting tomorrow, every member of the House and anyone in the public will be invited to review the five agencies that roughly make up 80% 80, 80 of appropriated dollars. My hope is that each of you will attend, present questions, and give feedback. We need your ideas on how we can do things better and more efficiently. We are also facing these challenges together. And we were all sent here by the people of this state to solve them. Before I was elected, I spent my life in the private sector, working in my family's community bank in rural Oklahoma. Over the years, my responsibilities grew. Our success grew because we put our customers first. When you care most about the people you are serving, they reward you with their trust. With me, there is no pride in authorship. I don't care if a good idea comes from a Republican or a Democrat. What I care about is serving the people of my district and the people of this state. My door will always be open to any member who has ideas to share on how we can best serve the public. I know that some in this chamber believe we must raise taxes to increase revenue. And I know that there are those in this chamber that believe the last thing we should do is raise taxes to increase revenue. But in the end, I know that well-meaning leaders who come together in the spirit of service and leadership will find common ground that best serves the people of Oklahoma. Members, our time here is brief. We have been trusted right now in this moment to meet the challenges of our state. I know that we are equal to the task. Thank you again for the honor to serve in this capacity, and I look forward to working with each of you in the larger chamber, the chamber closest to the people of the great state of Oklahoma. May God bless the Oklahoma House of Representatives and the great state of Oklahoma. Thank you again for this great honor.